So I guess um, we're going to get on to some specific talk about ink, but first we just wanted to give a little general talk about, about our studio uh, and, and what we do. Uh, because I was looking at the respondent list and I realized there's a really kind of diverse group of creatives here, from architects, designers, you name it, even a few illustrators. Uh, and what we do, because we're illustrators, is, is, a, is a lot of very specific. It's like the two of us sitting in a room, drawing and painting all day, the occasional email, very, very, very occasional uh, phone call. So, um, and we realize that, that that represents kind of a small slice of life. Uh, the other thing that's kind of unique about us is, is we're married, uh, we're raising a family together, and, and we work together. And we realize that's kind of that's specific. So, what we thought we'd do is just hopefully present our, our little slice of life in a way that you'll all find it relatable to, um, to your lives and your practices. So, we live in Bella Vista here in Philly, and my studio is at the top floor of our house. And I've always worked from home, and I like the way it lets me juggle work and life. So unusually, even though we collaborate and we work on the same paintings, um, I have a studio three blocks away. Keeps for a healthy marriage. Uh, and and, and I, well, I walk up and down Christian Street a lot with paintings in my hand. Uh, so I have a little storefront studio that I share with uh, the illustrator Martha Rich and the photographer Andrea uh, Cipriani Becky. And, and so like Gina works at home, uh, I work really close to home, and we've got two kids, which, which leads to some pretty interesting uh, life work mix-ups. Um, but, but somehow we, we, we managed to get all the jobs done, and uh, we thought we'd just kind of start off with like one or two. Um, this is a, a recent line of wallpaper that we designed for the Italian company Glamora. So we, we've always like, uh, looked at textiles as inspiration, but uh, until like the last few years, it was kind of like we would look at textiles and then create paintings inspired by textiles uh, and repeat design. And then uh, we've, we've sort of segued into being able to actually do some repeat design on fabric and on, in this case, walls. Uh, a little bit about our process. So this is another kind of recent finish that we did for Cornell University Press's quarterly uh, catalog. So it's a publisher. Uh, their big release this season was on monarch butterflies, and so this was like really loose art direction. It was just a, it had to have monarch butterflies on it, had to be springy and, and hand lettered. Um, so I'll show you some of our sketches. Uh, sometimes our, our sketches are kind of concepty. In this case, since the art direction was pretty straightforward, um, our sketches are showing variations on composition more than concept. So it's just kind of moving the butterflies around, trying out different lettering styles. And here we're, um, we're sketching with a combination of traditional materials and digital materials. And then you can see this is the, the sketch that was selected and the relationship of the sketch to the finish. Uh, this finish is acrylic paint and uh, India ink on board, which is kind of how we work. So our personal work has always been really important to our illustration practice. There's some sketchbooks. These images, not specifically created for a client, we do them either for ourselves or gallery shows. Doing this work means we have an ongoing set of images and ideas that are important to us. So when a job comes in, we're already in motion and have something to pull from. All right, so we're going to switch from maybe some from our general stuff, and we're going to start talking about inky stuff, um, specific ink stuff. Uh, and we're going to start off with pen and ink, um, which has been Gina's you know, material for a long, long time. It's been her, her primary material for a long time. Um, I could probably start in, in you know, childhood with that, but, but I think we'll start in art school. Gina and I went to art school in Baltimore, went to MICA, and, uh, and at that time, uh, there was all these kind of new elements in our life. So uh, we, we dug all of our classes, particularly uh, art history classes, all these new ideas kind of coming at us, really kind of for the first time gaining a, a full sense of um, the vibrancy of contemporary illustration. 
and Ginny used her sketchbooks as a way to kind of process all these ideas. Uh, on top of all the new ideas of art school, the environment of art school was a new environment. So Gina uh, is from Minnesota originally and moved from Minnesota to um, the, the, the comfy little um, quaint town of Baltimore. Uh, and so that was, a, that was a big switch and she reacted to that environment, recorded that environment uh, all through her sketchbooks. So this is the cover of one of those sketchbooks. This is like the type of drawing that she would do, uh, doodling on the cover of the book. This is uh, originally like a, um, a found scrapbook that we dug out of some junk shop and she painted on top of. So originally in those sketchbooks, she was drawing with uh, microns and rapidiographs, which are like technical pens. Uh, and they have an absolutely even line weight. So it means that from the beginning of the line to the end of the line, it doesn't get thicker or thinner, it stays the same width. Uh, and then looking for a more characteristic line, uh, she came along to the, the originally the crow quill pen, uh, which is this little, this little guy right here. And the thing about a crow quill uh, pen is it's, it's really, really pressure sensitive. So uh, you can have a line start thin, get thick, and then kind of gracefully taper out to thin again. Uh, from there, she, she kind of started experimenting with different types of dip pens. Um, there's some of them up here. And these are all like what she's using today. So this is right off of her desk last week. Um, and then, and then uh, dipping brushes into ink. Uh, the type of ink uh, that she started using then and still uses today is Windsor & Newton Black Indian ink. It's that little jar up there. She likes the small jars, not the big jars, not the medium jars, the small jars. Um, so uh, there's a couple of unusual things about uh, Windsor & Newton Black Indian ink. Uh, the first one is, is, is uh, in the 1980s uh, at my high school, Upper Darby High School, it's what the art department sucked. And because of that, it meant that um, uh, it was the ink that I stole uh, when I wanted to start getting stick and poke tattoos to uh, my friends. Um, so, uh, so, and because it was the ink that I, that I boosted from my, my art department, it was also the ink that I brought to art school and I gave to uh, my new girlfriend when she needed something to play around with. <laughs> the other interesting thing about Winsor Newton ink uh, is it's, it's got a shellac base. So all the other inks I've ever encountered have um, like a water base. And since this has a shellac base, you can see it kind of raises up off the surface even after it's dry. And that gives it a physicality that, um, that I think we've always really enjoyed. It lets Gina really beat it up. She can put it on top of acrylic paint. She can kind of wash it off with water, all kinds of stuff. And when you wash it off with water, it kind of like halfway sticks. All right, so uh, she's experimented with other inks throughout the years. This is like a special like colored iridescent ink. Uh, this is actually some more black Windsor Newton along with some um, colored ink. All right, so um, the work Gina was doing in her sketchbooks during college, uh, that was all like developmental work. That was all kind of for her just to kind of process things. Um, the finishes that she was doing at the time, uh, this is back in art school, toward the end of art school, and then just after art school when she left and kind of entered the professional world, uh, that work was ink, paint, and collage. So this is a piece from that time. Uh, we love digging around old junk shops, pulling out old books, objects, magazines, and Gina would work on top of those things with uh, ink and paint. And uh, when we left school, she started working right away, uh, mostly in editorial. And the thing about editorial jobs is there's a quick turnaround, and you do a lot of them. And so uh, what that allows for is, is, is a kind of a process of reflection, and you really kind of figure out what's essential to your working process. And uh, through repetition, through working and working and working, uh, Gina started to come to the realization that uh, collage wasn't so important. So you can see here it literally falls into the background. There's a little bit of newspaper in the background, but most of what you're seeing is ink and paint and then just a little bit of collage. Um, and so at the same time, she's uh, doing a bunch of editorial work. We moved from Baltimore up to Brooklyn and we had to look at this big box of collage supplies and say like, is this essential? Is this really need to be part of my um, working process? and we quite literally uh, left it behind. So uh, up in Brooklyn, uh, Gina kind of hits her stride and she's doing, uh, she's sprinting out from editorial, in this case uh, a book cover, um, and she's doing all that work in ink and paint, uh, no collage, and moved on from that. As her career grew, and, and again stemming out into even more markets, so this is uh, her signature shoe for Converse, uh, again, these are all executed in just ink and paint. So she'd kind of moved on from that past medium. Every once in a while, we'd get some oddball jobs that would say, you know, could we just get ink? And, and uh, I think enjoy those jobs, do those jobs, but, um, but was not really identifying as an artist that created artwork with just ink. She really identified as an artist who created artwork uh, using ink in tandem with paint. 
this is one of those pieces using both ink and paint. It was also the image a branding firm called Duffy and Partners used as reference when they contacted me to work on a rebrand for Whole Foods. Specifically, they zeroed in on the two leaves. Mm, these two. Yeah. And asked if I could focus on more ink work like that. So I dove in and did a lot of ink drawings. And then I did more ink drawings. And my little dog helped me. So all in all, we did hundreds and hundreds of drawings for them. And basically at this point, I was working with the material I knew pretty well, but because of the sheer volume of the project, I came to know the ink more than ever before. There was no paint to react to, and because the icons were so simple, every stroke mattered. And this is how they look in the store today. And we live about three blocks from Whole Foods, and seeing these illustrations in use has become a regular part of our life. And as the scope of the job grew, and my ink drawings were used on all of kinds of things. That's my hand. Yes, Matt, model. <laughs> I worked with them for about five years, and because of how long this job stuck around, and because of the directness of the mark, which was just ink and no other materials, it definitely left an impression on me and became a major way of how I now make artwork. All right. so. Uh, we're, we're, we're sort of telling a story that seems very, very concise. You know, Gina moves from collage paint ink to paint ink uh, onto just ink. Um, and that would be a very tidy story, but, but uh, the fact is, is that her practice is a little more complicated than that. Because um, this was one of Gina's personal images that she did while she was doing the Whole Foods job. And so here she was with this like crystallized moment of like, oh wow, I can have this really kind of essential direct statement of just ink and have that be a way that I work. And um, that was a realization, but it wasn't a singular realization. Um, because she continues to do uh, personal pieces that are ink on paint that we're really excited about. And, uh, and I think both these were re recognized by Society of Illustrators and have been uh, licensed by Urban Outfitters, and so uh, I guess other people have liked them too. So, um, so the realization that uh, ink can be this kind of very direct and pure statement um, doesn't exist by itself. So on top of um, you know, ink and paint uh, and ink by itself, there's, there's digital ink. So uh, we have a Cintiq and, and, and it kind of does a digital simulation of what Juniper, I'm Juniper, that's my, that's my, that's our daughter, sorry, um, of what Gina's, I, I, I do that a lot, yeah, of what Gina's um, crocodile pen does, right? So you press harder, the line gets thicker, except it's on a computer screen. Um, here's a finish that was done in digital ink and traditional ink that was digitally colored. So this is um, a gift card that Gina did for uh, Target. And then, of course, the ink is, is, is has been, and will be uh, a major part of what uh, Gina contributes to the collaborations that we do together. So the ink has be become my way of relating to the world, and it's been my way of finding what's essential. All right, so we're going to segue to another type of ink, uh, and that's screen printing ink and the role it's played in, in uh, my life and my practice. So back in high school, um, I worked at a, a kind of a sweatshop. It was like a windowless warehouse uh, that banged out uh, everything from uh, Little League uniforms to uh, uh, wild, Wildwood Boardwalk t-shirts to um, lots of um, Calvin pissing on things. Um, so, so, uh, so it was a screen printing warehouse, except that screen printers were like the top of the hierarchy and I was at the bottom of the hierarchy. So, so I, didn't, I didn't actually screen print at this place. I, I pulled the screen prints off the conveyor belt at the end of the, um, the heat dryer. But it, it kind of planted the seed of that as a, a medium, a mechanical medium. So toward the end of um, college and just after college, for me, I was working on this body of work where I wanted to play these kind of like hand-done, realistically painted areas off of um, something more mechanical and linear. Uh, and, and I don't know, I just never really thought in line. While Gina, you know, she really relates to that, I, I always thought in more painterly terms. And so I would appropriate images, so these were taken out of like books, and then burn screens from there, and then screen print these backgrounds. And I was doing a bunch of paintings like this, and it was really how I identified uh, my working practice. However, after time, like I tried, I tried my hand at doing a few line drawings, I wasn't really happy with them, I would burn screens from them and print them. And then I actually started asking Gina, like, hey, could you just do this drawing, and then I'll burn a screen from it and print it, but I was still thinking of them as my paintings. Um, screen printing her drawings in the background. And then we kind of sat down and had a conversation. We were, we were working 
I don't know, I, I'm married 10 years deep at that point or eight years deep of like sharing like little tiny spaces working on top of each other um, in, in the studio. And, um, and so I had passed a painting to her and we, we realized that these were no longer my paintings, they were collaborations. And paintings like this became paintings like this um, once Gina went nuts on them. So uh, we liked these a lot. We felt like we had really come to something that, that felt um, good to us. And we, we turned out a whole bunch of work at this time. And uh, we were showing a uh, fair amount here in Philly, up in Brooklyn, and then a little bit around the country. This is a more recent painting. Uh, and, and I should say, let me just go back one slide here. Uh, uh, all these pieces have, have elements of screen print in the backgrounds, uh, India ink, and acrylic paint um, on the top stuff. So this piece uh, is screen print in the background, and then paint it and draw it on top. Uh, so this is uh, from a show we had at 222 Gallery um, here in Philly, and uh, the wall in the background is uh, all repeat screen printed from a screen that I burned from Gina's ink drawing. So kind of ink screen print nexus. Um, and the backgrounds of each of those paintings uh, are printed with this screen, which again is a screen burned from Gina's ink drawings. And these are, these are the individual paintings that were hanging on that wall. So what we're looking at here is a background of um, screen print. So these uh, kind of flower patterns back there are screen printed. There and those paintings uh, go back a few years, these paintings right here. Um, this painting is uh, one of our more recent pieces. And it shows how this process is still very relevant to us. It's still pretty much what we do. So the um, kind of grass, the pink grass that you see in the background there is screen printed from a screen that was burned from Gina's ink drawings. Um, the large mandalas uh, are ink, ink drawn. And then those kind of realistic apples are acrylic painted. All right, so um, one of the ink's defining characteristics is you know, that it creates an indelible mark. It's what we think of when we think of ink. Uh, the funny thing is, is illustration is sort of the opposite. It's a completely ephemeral medium. Uh, you know, today's magazine, tomorrow's recycling. Uh, sneakers, they get worn out. Brands, they get rebranded. Uh, so it comes and it goes. Uh, in a lot of ways, we, we find that pretty freeing, right? So it allows us to not look backwards, to always look forwards. So uh, I was thinking about that dichotomy of, here we are like making all these images with this indelible mark, but in the end, they, they don't really last. Um, and, and, and uh, we're always on, moved on to this new things and ink is not so permanent a medium after all. And we had these talks about whether or not we like that and I think in the end, we kind of like that. And that's all we have.